really honored to be here speaking with all of you, and uh, I'm very proud to be here representing two organizations, DoSomething.org and Crisis Text Line. Um, so DoSomething.org is the largest organization for youth and social change in the country. We have 1.7 million members, young people, who take action on causes they care about, from <laughs> bullying to domestic violence to homelessness to poverty. Crisis Text Line is a subsidiary of DoSomething.org and will be the first crisis line where a young person can text into a centralized location and get instantaneously connected to the specific help they need, all via text messaging. And so like I said, I'm very proud to be associated with both of these organizations. Um, and, and a lot of that pride comes from there's something at the heart of these organizations that I think is key to our success, but is also vital to any policy or campaign or organization that deals with young people and engaging them on issues. And that is that we meet young people where they are. We bring them to the table and listen to their voice and we also communicate to them in the methods and mediums that are most important to them. Now tactically, what this means for us is text messaging. Now, how many people here, uh, can someone guess, what is the average amount of text messages a teenager sends in a month? Seriously, shout it out, somebody. 4,000. 4,000. This is where conversation is happening for young people. It's not happening on email. If you Google email is for, you'll see why. Um, it's also not happening on phones anymore. Calls are just decreasing. The conversations are ha happening on text messaging. The cooler thing about text messaging is it also has a 98% open rate. So that means if one of you here has a partner, a boyfriend, a girlfriend who says, oh, I never got that text message, there's a 98% chance that they are lying to you. <laughs> That's right. Um, and so what this means for DoSomething.org, to talk about that first, is we text message with over one million teens on a weekly basis. And it, the amount of engagement we see is significantly higher than any other method of communication. We get text messages back all the time. And so we run campaigns like Teens for Jeans, where teens can donate local jeans to homeless shelters, or campaigns like 50 Cans, where we had teens recycle 1.3 million cans. And both of those campaigns could be done via text message. You text in a keyword to our short code, 38383, and then you could get all the information about the campaign, tips on how to do it, and also you could even send us back a photo to show us what you did. So that stuff's really cool, but the, the really awesome work that we're doing that I'm very excited about is SMS gaming. These are um, behavior change experiences, like one called the bully text, which is an experience that a young person sends to their peer. And what it is, it's super cool. It's like a choose your own adventure where you could step in the shoes of a young person on their first day of school who will then interact with different instances of bullying. For example, they'll be in a locker room and hear like a group of kids gang up on another kid and then you are challenged to decide what you do in that situation. This is an experience that not only shows the emotional ramifications of bullying, but it also helps young people educate each other on how you stand up to bullying and all the different ways that you could intervene. We see a lot of deep engagement with these, a lot of effect in terms of attitude and behavior change, and so we're now currently trying to look on other campaigns, for example, about prescription drug abuse or dating violence that we're hoping to use text messaging to really make an impact on. Now, I said earlier that we broadcast to one million teens and we get text messages back. And a lot of them are fun. Um, the, the woman who sends the text messages, her name is Alicia, and she's been asked out probably more than anybody in the world at this point. <laughs> There's this one kid, he's like, Alicia, I play guitar, you wanna go out with me? Um, it was very smooth. Um, but we also get a lot of text messages that aren't fun, that aren't funny. Text messages like, I don't wanna go to school, the boys call me faggot. Or, like the text message we got a little over a year ago, he's raping me, he told me not to tell anybody, it's my dad, are you there? And we were there. Um, all of us are here because we know the amazing breadth of issues that young people are dealing with, from sexual assault to abuse to just anxiety about their future and the pressures that they're going through. And what 
you know, for dosomething.org, that's, we were getting those text messages not because that's what we do. We were a social change organization. We were getting them because there is a need for it and because we were there in the medium that mattered most to young people. And because of that, our CEO, Nancy Lublin, came up with the idea and is now starting Crisis Text Line. And the way Crisis Text Line will work is simple. A teen can text in with any issue they have, it does not matter what it is, to one location. They will be connected to a trained counselor who will get back to them via text message within 14 minutes, and then that teen will get that message instantaneously. And there's a lot of advantages of doing a crisis line via text messaging. One is um, beyond the fact, as I mentioned, it's where young people are, it's also the volume we will be able to handle is significantly more than with traditional text lines. Where you could only have one conversation at a time, we are building a software system where trained counselors will be able to handle multiple instances at the same time. There's also an amazing ability for a variety of issues. Like, it's very hard, if you're a young person who's having suicidal thoughts, what's the number that you call? You don't, it's not an easy, it's not at the tip of your fingers. We will create a centralized location and then we're built to partner with multiple organizations that are already trained in this and we'll send the kids to the most relevant issue. So Crisis Text Line is launching in Chicago and El Paso in August and for that launch, as an example, we're partnered with the Trevor Project. So any young person who is dealing with issues involving LGBT will be able to be funneled into that organization to get the most relevant help. And then when we're nationwide in 2014, there will be a whole slew of organizations that we're looking to partner with to provide that help. Um, so at the beginning, just to close out, I, I talked about how do something.org and Crisis Text Line meet teens where they are. And you know, I've talked about that in terms of text messaging and the tactics a lot. But what I think is most important and is that it's not just about the tactics. It's about bringing young people and listening to their voice and letting them share their experiences with you. We have youth advisory councils. Every single one of my campaigns goes through young people to get their point of view, to get their ideas. If we are serious about helping young people in mental health issues, it is not just enough for a bunch of intelligent adults to sit in a room and talk to each other. If there are no young people in that room talking as well, then any policy and any campaign will be incomplete. We have to make sure that we, everybody in here, brings young people to the table, gets their experiences, gets their expertise, lets their voice inform the policies and the ideas that we have. And by doing that, by bringing them to us and letting them be a part of it, that's how we will start to make a significant change on mental health. Thank you.